was that about? This week, the football world almost ate itself. The European Super League had fans across the globe distraught and looking for blood. But if you were living under a rock from Sunday until just now, you probably have no idea what just happened. Or maybe you're not a full-fledged football fan yet. So let me fill you in. 12 of the most popular and powerful clubs in Europe put in motion the plans to create the European Super League. Composed of Spain's Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Atletico, Italy's Juventus, Milan, and Inter, and of course, the Premier League's Big Six, Man United, Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal, and Tottenham. The main goal for the 12 founding members? Well, when it comes to the life of greedy rich men, they can never get enough money. At the head of this was president of Real Madrid, Florentino Perez, who actually had this vision many years ago. Juventus' Andrea Agnelli was heavily involved but came in much later. More recently, Manchester United and Liverpool proposed Project Big Picture, a way to get more leverage in their own league, just the same way the big clubs had done this with the invention of the Premier League back in the 90s. The owners of these big clubs have been trying to make reforms on the Champions League so that their big popular sides could face off against one another in order to gain more viewership and more money. But with so many of these smaller clubs mixed in with a random draw, this has proven to be difficult for them. It becomes even more difficult for the clubs like Tottenham, Arsenal, and Milan, who have struggled to stay in the Champions League places. Owners John Henry, Joel Glazer, and Stan Kroenke are all American owners who combined with Perez and Agnelli devised a new competition that would resemble American sports, in which there would be two divisions and a playoff to decide the winner. But UEFA didn't like this idea, and so this brings us to this past Sunday when it was announced that the 12 would form the Super League. In addition, all these 12 founding members could not face relegation. So if you're, let's say, an owner like Stan Kroenke, you don't have to worry about your horrible mismanagement costing you Champions League cash. With the announcement, members of the ECU resigned, such as Perez, Agnelli, and Ed Woodward. FIFA and UEFA immediately fired back. FIFA claimed that they would ban all players associated with the ESL from any international competitions. UEFA immediately threatened to ban those clubs from participation in the Champions League, including this year. However, it was leaked that an anonymous owner wouldn't actually mind this, stating that the focus would be on the Super League, maybe even pulling players out of domestic matches. This triggered the league's fury, as it would mean that the lack of competitive matches would actually financially hurt the clubs playing in those domestic leagues. And it's believed that eventually, with time, all of these clubs would just play solely in the Super League. With the primary attractions gone from the domestic leagues and the UCL, this could cause broadcasters to ask for rebates. And those lack of funds could destroy the entire football pyramid. And with it, clubs, jobs, and future football careers. Now, we haven't talked about the fact that there were three spots to be named. Many just assumed they were intended to be for PSG, Bayern Munich, and Borussia Dortmund. The Bundesliga clubs are a different case though. The 50 plus one rule has given fans majority control over club endeavors. With German fans being so close to the traditions of the game and perhaps knowing the instability of the whole thing, I am proud to say Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund stood firm and took a stance against the ECL. Paris was different. Owner Nasir Al Khalifi is also owner of Bien, which has invested millions in the Champions League rights and Al Khalifi is also close with UEFA. With the collective outrage and protesting of fans, media, players, and managers in particular, the operation imploded. It may have been a good idea to at least let their employees know their plans ahead of time, so Pep Guardiola didn't say the Super League wasn't a sport in the press. Fans of clubs across Europe let their voices be heard in dire times, and one by one the clubs began to pull out. While it may seem now that the darkest time in football is over, I'm not holding my breath. Looking through the official statements of some of these clubs, they're not outright pulling out of the Super League. Laporta just announced that leaving the Super League would be a mistake. In fact, Florentino Perez has stated that the Super League is not dead after all. 
In the midst of all this, UEFA did change the Champions League format, which will come into effect in 2024. The competition will see a total of 36 clubs split into two massive groups, which I personally see as a step backward in this whole ordeal. Forgetting about the European Super League for a moment, this week has shown us the problems in football are so much deeper and greater than any of us may have realized or just simply cared to acknowledge. I think we need to point ourselves in the direction of the governing bodies that allowed these clubs to get so rich and powerful to begin with because it's their greed and disregard for morality that has gotten us this far to begin with. They need reform just as much as all these clubs do. As much as people say that they couldn't bear the idea of losing these underdog stories like Leicester, that is something that almost never happens and for a reason. Not to take away from all the incredible hard work during that season, but a lot had to fall into place for that moment in history. So if you actually want that in your game, we need to give these clubs more financial stability. We all just saw firsthand how much power football fans have. We have to make our dollars, our attention, and our voices count with collective actions. It's our responsibility to stop this thing in its tracks. This battle may be over, but the war on football is just beginning. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Lingo Sports and Lingo News for a whole lot more just like this.